Okay, so this is the review of the Fredonia University as of the end of the spring 2015 semester. So what I'm going to do is I have a whole list of things that I ask people to do, pro and con list, and I'm going to order it not by pros, pros, and cons, or whatever that kind of order is. I'm going to go by what most people all said. So if I got A, B, and C, and 20 people said something about B, and 10 said A, and 5 said C, it goes B, A, C regardless of whether or not it is a pro or a con. So what I'm going to start out with is the one that most people agreed upon, which is the food. Most people said the food sucked. Actually, no one said the food was good. One person said the food was okay, but pretty much everyone said the food sucked. Most people agreed that it was way too expensive, which it was. I think it was... um five or six dollars for three chicken tenders or something like that something absolutely ridiculous and the uh, convenience store was the same way whatever the price was for a product at Walmart the convenience store doubled it like a bag of chips was twice as expensive or something aside from the price uh, a lot of people hated the plans the way it was set up the way it was required for your freshman year uh, the way they were set up and what they offered a lot of people either had to have too many points and thus at the end of the year when they had 200 extra points, which would be $200, they had no way of spending it, and you lose $200. Your only other option is to not have enough, and you end up running out three months before the semester ends, and you go hungry. Along with that, uh, the quality of the food, that was another one that was mostly agreed upon. The food was pretty bad. Uh, food uh, oftentimes was burnt. I know at uh, Willie C., the Williams Center, Center Point, uh, Pizza was burnt. Pizza was actually... We had terrible pizza there one time. Like, it, would, it tasted like rubber. Like, the cheese was rubber. Uh, the breadsticks, I feel like, unless you get a person that knows how they're making them, which is maybe one of the employees, they were always burnt. The quality was just bad. It was bad food. Uh, another person said that, with food still, uh, it was continuously getting worse. Like, uh, the freshman year, I can go with that one too. Freshman year, I thought it was pretty good. I thought the food was um, good quality. Uh, the price wasn't too bad. It was actually a lot cheaper to buy stuff on campus than it would have been to buy it off campus. And then sophomore year, the quality went down and the prices went up. The year after that, same thing. And it kept going and going and going. It seems like it just keeps getting worse and it gets more expensive on top of that. You're paying for worse food, basically. The options of food... That was also another big one. People didn't like the options available for them, which consisted of Tim Hortons, Starbucks, Willie C, and Cranston. So the four options. And to go with that, uh, the lack of Erie. Erie was the big one. I think Erie might have been the biggest dining hall. I'm not too sure, but I know it took a, uh, a lot of students in, and it cut down on the uh, amount of people at all the other places. Because now we're at the point where, now that Erie's gone, if you try to get lunch anywhere on campus, you're going to end up waiting 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes just to get food. And, by the time, and if you have a class afterwards, like if you're trying to go from class, lunch to class, you're either not going to have enough time to eat food, you're going to have to bring your food to class and eat it, or you're just going to have to skip lunch and go straight to class. And that was uh, another one on your crowded dining areas. Uh, that was a big complaint. And along with that, the last one for food was that there's only one place open late. And I think that's Tim Hortons. Or they might be talking about William Center. William Center being the only one that's open till midnight, with you know Cranston closing early and Erie not being open at all. So food was by far the biggest con of Fredonia. More people hated that than they hated anything else or liked anything else. That was the biggest one. Let's see what number two is. Number two is another con, and it is parking. Everyone hated the parking. <laughs> It seems like the biggest complaint that went with parking was the fact that you had to come 15, 20 minutes early to class on top of being able to walk to class. So say you had a 2 o'clock class and you come in 10 minutes early so that way you're early to class. You had to come in another 20 minutes prior to that in order to find a parking spot. Or, you know, parking so far back that it takes you 15 minutes just to walk to campus. Which happens a lot. If, if the parking behind Dodds is full, uh, good luck finding parking anywhere else. Chances are A is full. You might find a spot at the back of B, which is if you have a class at Thompson or Fenton, uh, five, ten minute walk. I'm not really sure how far that was. I ended up longboarding most of the time so I can get to class on time. 
But uh, yeah, if, if you can't get behind Dodds, which usually fills up around 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, and is, you can't really find parking there until like 2 or 3 in the afternoon, uh, you're pretty much screwed for parking. The only other place you can really go is uh, A if you're lucky, if something's open on A, but usually like lot B or C or behind the new Science Center. It seemed like there was decent parking there, but it's kind of far away from uh, some of the further buildings. With parking, there was a second complaint that went with parking was on events. When the school had events, they usually closed off the parking that's in campus. So Jewett, the front of Dodge, stuff like that. And it seemed like they'd block off the parking lots and only fill up half of these lots. So they block off Jewett and you come by and you see and there's only six cars in there. They block off Dodds and only half of the lot is full. Like they could have just reserved half the lot for these people and left the other half open. But um no, nope, they just blocked off the entire lot. So number three is three is another con. So the top three things that everyone that were agreed upon the most have all been cons so far. Number three which isn't really in control, or the school's not in control of, but it's the snow slash weather, it seems. Um, so the school can't control this, but it's the location of the school. You know, you don't get you don't get much of spring, you don't get much of autumn, fall. You get a lot of winter. You get a lot of snowfall, you get a lot of winter. And as the uh, atmospheric part of the school, most people hated it. <laughs> They hated the snow, they hated the weather. Number four is a tie. It's a tie between a pro and a con, so I'll go pro, just because we haven't had a pro yet. But pro is the people. Most people like the, uh, they like the people on campus, the, uh, the other students on there. They said they were pretty accepting of other people, of other differences. They liked people, they liked the fact that they were accepting of other people. The, the con that was tied with the pro was the people. <laughs> so... The biggest pro was the people, but the third biggest con was the, also the people. And it seems like a, uh, most people dislike the people because they are obnoxious, which I do agree upon. There are a lot of obnoxious people on campus. They're arrogant. And it seems like most people also agreed upon that uh, the people in their majors should not be in their majors. And, you know, Specifically, what someone said that the other people in their major were terrible at that major that they were in. And I also agree with that. <laughs> Uh, there's also many clicks, uh, too many hipsters, but with that, no, I do agree upon that. There are people that would go into uh, crowded places on campus during busy times of the day and just do something that you wouldn't normally do just to grab attention, which happened a lot. You, you know, you got people who just decided to lay on the sidewalk or something like that or be obnoxious on the side next to a dining center. That did happen a lot, and it was very annoying. Uh, there's also the obnoxious people, the ones who sit in the back and talk. There's always someone in any class you take that just sits in the back and talks, some group back there. We're on to another pro. All right. So we got we got two pros coming up, actually. So the first one, they're both tied, was uh, the campus and the town. It was you know a combination of the campus and the town. They liked the fact that the campus was small. It was easy to walk two classes you know, between the buildings. I think the furthest point might be a five, seven-minute walk between the academic buildings. Uh, the campus is small. They do a very good job of you know, keeping up with keeping it clean and everything. And uh, the size of the town, the fact that you know the, you can walk from the apartments on the other side of campus to downtown within 15 minutes, 20 minutes, was nice. They liked the, you know, the town was clean, it was small, it gave that small town feeling. So the pro that follows that, that it was tied with, were professors. Now, not great professors, not good professors, but most people agreed that the professors were decent. They did the job, they taught enough to get them by, and they weren't terrible. There, there's a four-way tie here, so I'll just I'll keep going with the pros. So another pro was the fitness center. Uh, they liked the equipment there, the clean, uh, how clean it was, and um, just the newness of it. it was, you know, it's a new a new fitness center. It just opened recently. But there's a catch with that one. Thing. Most people agree that the fitness center was good, but only during specific times. Because uh, certain days, enti certain entire days, or just certain times during most days, it's completely packed. And you can't do anything. There's only so much equipment in there for uh, people to use for weightlifting. There's only one set of dumbbells. There's only you know one set of bars. There's very few power racks. And you know it only takes five, ten people in there using weight equipment 
to uh, completely mess up your workout because there's not enough equipment there for more than a dozen people. So continuing off of that with another pro. So the fitness center was a pro. Most people like the fitness center, you know, but it was just during specific times. And the next one after that, uh, most people like the small classes. Uh, a lot of classes, and, I, and a lot of classes I had, you know, were only 20, 20 or less people actually, but you know, 20 to 30 people. I only had a very few amount of lecture halls where there was, you know, more than 40 kids. But I was in a, uh, a specific major where the classes were going to be small no matter what. I'm not sure if some people had more lectures than than normal, but uh, most people agreed that they liked the small classes and everything. So now we're back over to the cons again, and this is still part of the four-way tie. So tied with those two pros was a con, which was professors. Yeah, a lot of people didn't like the professors that they had, and I did have not too many, maybe a, a quarter of my professors weren't that good. They either just didn't teach a lot or they read straight out of the book, which was a huge problem when you just sit there for an hour and 20 minutes and the professor just sits there with a book and just reads off the page for an hour and 20 minutes. That happened a few times to me, mostly in my uh, 100 level classes, but uh, it does happen. There's also the professors that just don't teach you anything that you're supposed to be being taught. So you sign up for a class, say, um, not, not for me biology, but let's just say biology, and your teacher doesn't really teach you anything about biology. It didn't happen with me with biology, but it has happened with me in other classes where they don't actually teach you. Um, what I'm going to add on to that is the the uh, international professors, the professors that aren't uh, American, English. They don't English isn't their first language. Usually, they have a, English as their second language, and they're <laughs> they are very difficult to understand uh, unless they give you a PowerPoint or notes or uh, even a book, which you know. A lot of the classes that they teach, you don't really want to read out of a book, but usually notes or uh, a PowerPoint, you don't understand what they say. And that happens a lot with math and computer science, I've noticed. Which sucks, because they're very good people, or they're very nice people, they're good at what they do, but you can't understand what they say. Which isn't good if you're trying to actually learn what you're supposed to be doing. So Ty, the fourth one in this four-way tie, another con, is the advisors. A lot of people hated the advisors, the advising system, the people that they had, and I know this has happened to a lot of people. They couldn't graduate on time because their advisors didn't do their job. And I know I know these people have to advise a lot of students and everything, but what happened a lot with kids is that their advisors would tell them they're on track to graduate on time, they have all the classes they need, and then their senior year comes up. The last semester of their senior year comes up, and all of a sudden what's been overlooked for the last year, year and a half, was a certain class that they didn't have the credit for. And they didn't tell them until their last semester. And of course you can't just take a class your last semester if you're past the, uh, the sign-up deadline. So now you're stuck there for another semester. That happened with a lot of people. Or just advisors in general messing up the entire schedule, giving them classes they didn't need or not, giving them, or not telling them what classes they did need and they end up missing it and having to figure it out themselves. I went around this by for the first three years actually by just ignoring everything my advisor said going through the check sheet that I needed for my majors or just the CCC check sheet and just t signing up for those classes myself. Regardless of what the advisor said, usually uh, on the list that my of classes my advisor gave me, I might have taken two, which I w would already be on the list I made up, but then, you know, two, three, four other classes that they wanted me to take, I just didn't take them. I just went straight through the CCC check sheet and then went straight through the major check sheet because uh, the classes that they wanted me to take either were with professors that got very low ratings on Rate My Professor or were classes I just did not need whatsoever. So another pro that was very big for Fredonia <laughs> actually has nothing to do with the school. A lot of people like the nightlife outside of Fredonia, the bars downtown, which I do agree. There were some good bars down there. There were good, you know, you got restaurants and um, there's an ice cream shop not too far away. So the nightlife was a big one. That was a pro. Uh, big, a big con. Ah, uh, medium con. I think we're, we're about in the middle now. In the middle now, so uh, a middle con is the town. So even though a lot of people like the town, more people like the town than dislike the town, but a big thing that they thought the town was the, uh, they think Fredonia's boring. The town of Fredonia is boring, which it, if you do stuff for about a month straight in the town, you run out of things to do. Like, I mean, there's only so many bars down there, unless you have a a specific bar you keep going back to, you know, or uh, one bar that you really like, you're gonna run out of a, you're gonna run out of bars to go to because there's only one or two good bars down there per person, and that's about it. 
the town doesn't really have any stores or shops that are interesting. Um, Dunkirk has nothing. You don't really want to go to Dunkirk. Chances are you have to drive 40, 50 an hour up to Buffalo to really do anything. And right below the town, a lot of people hated the internet on campus. Uh, if you're connected through the Ethernet, it's usually fine. You don't run into too many problems. That's fast. You don't, you don't have a problem with the Ethernet. As long as you're plugged in to Fredonia's Internet, you're fine. Their Wi-Fi, however, ResNet, <laughs> would consistently go out. Not like on a weekly basis, but on a daily basis. Like it either just dropped speed or just completely disconnected. It was almost always going down. You could run into an hour of it being down like once a week. Or, you know, every hour they'd go down for a few minutes. Another con, uh, this one was in the middle, was snow removal. And, you know, <laughs> one of the biggest cons for Fredonia, the school, was the weather itself. So the fact that the snow removal was a pretty decent sized con on here. Most people didn't like that. And it, it made sense. Uh, you'd get six inches of snow, a foot of snow overnight, or during the day, and they wouldn't start cleaning off most of the snow until the next day. So you'd come to school, uh, get stuck in a parking lot, and chances are the parking lot wouldn't be plowed until 24 hours later, which happened quite often. Uh, the roads were usually covered in snow, which, <laughs> which really sucked. But uh, yeah, it usually took them 24 hours to start clearing away things. I'm not, they usually plowed Ring Road, and that was about it. They wouldn't get to the other roads until hours later. Um, it really sucked when it snowed overnight, and then you got classes the next day because none of the snow was gone. So you probably can't get out of the parking lot. You're going to be walking down sidewalks in a foot of snow. And uh, to go with that, the ice, it seemed like, you know, they did eventually get to the snow within, you know, a day or two. But the ice, it seemed like they only ever tried to get rid of the ice once a week, which sucked because almost everything has stairs. And I've seen so many people fall down stairs because it's not iced. The sidewalks were always iced. The roads were iced. They'd get the snow off the road, but they wouldn't get the ice off the road. I've seen quite a few cars go straight through stop signs and intersections and almost hit some people. I have seen two cars actually hit each other because one person just slid. And they weren't even going fast. They were going like 5 or 10 miles. And they stopped. They started slowing down uh, for a normal distance. And then they just slid right through the stop sign and hit a car going by. And, you know, it wasn't a big collision or anything. No one was hurt, but I have seen a lot. But um, I rarely see any salt on the ice there. Another con, so we're, we're still going through the cons here, was the uh, equipment for certain majors. Uh, if you're not in a, in a teaching style class, if you're in a class that requires equipment, it's usually bad, it's usually old. It happens a lot and usually doesn't work. Uh, I know my major specifically was a, it's a lot of video equipment and a lot of that stuff is older than 10 years. A lot of it's broken. A lot of it doesn't work, which sucks. I know photography, that major, almost all of their stuff is from the 70s, I think. Also a con is university police. Um, a, a decent amount of people did not like university police, usually because they didn't follow up on vehicle damage. If, you, if someone hit your car in a parking lot, they didn't follow up on it. They didn't follow up on it. Uh, they would give you tickets even when you gave them notice ahead of time that you might be in a parking lot. Uh, a bit later than normal. They'd, I had a friend actually, they'd call down to UP. They'd tell them, hey, this is my car. This is the license plate, what it looks like. I'm going to be in this parking lot overnight because I'm going to be in this building overnight. And they'd, you know, come back out from their classwork or from their, from their project work and there'd be a ticket on their car. Even though UP told them, hey, that's fine. They'd still ticket their car. And that actually happened a lot. There had also been a few bad situations between the students and UP. I'm not sure what the exact situations were, but a few people did complain that uh, they had some bad situations with UP. Uh, another one with UP is that they were very rude, and I do agree with that. I had a friend in my group almost get uh, arrested because he was asking permission to do something, and they, they flipped out, and, and he ended up, the officer ended up getting suspended for it for uh, his reaction to the student asking for permission to, to do something. A lot of kids, 18, 19, 20, drink on campus, and they get caught, and nothing happens to them. That happens a lot. There's also a lot of public intoxication on campus, and UP doesn't really do much about that either. We're moving on to some pros now, finally. So we got some pros coming up. So the soccer field and the hockey arena. A lot of people like both of those. There were No one said anything bad about either of those. Ferdoni does have a very good soccer field, and uh, their hockey arena is 
very well kept. Quite a few people that said that the food was okay. So even though most people hated the food, there were a decent group of people that said the food was okay. Not good, just okay. And this was only compared to other SUNY schools. And uh, they liked the fact that there was gluten and GMO free food options on campus. And uh, a couple of people just liked the fact that there was a Starbucks. A lot of people had okay classes. Not good classes, not bad classes, but they had okay classes. With that, a lot of people liked Angel, the Angel system. Um, I thought it was pretty good too. It never really went down. I never had any problems with it. Uh, professors that used it, <laughs> that's a big one. Only a very small percentage of professors actually used Angel, which sucked because, you know, for uh, homework notes and stuff like that, using Angel is pretty good. I liked it, but not enough professors used it. But a lot of people, a lot of students that, you know, did use Angel, they, they do like the system. Here, we are back down to cons. Bad classes. That's the next biggest con. A lot, of, a lot of students had bad classes. They complained about their classes. They didn't like the classes. I do agree that there were uh, a handful of classes that I've taken that haven't been good, which sucks because, you know, even though most of them are pretty good, there's just there's too many that aren't. There's too many that are bad. This one, yeah, this next one, which I am all for, is another con, and it is the name of the school. I don't know why the administration decided to cut out any ties to the fact that this is a university or a college and just go with Fredonia, which is the name of the town that it's in, but a lot of people think that the fact that we are now only Fredonia is stupid. They don't like it, they think it's stupid, they think it's retarded. SUNY Fredonia is fine, Fredonia State is fine. I don't know why they didn't just pick between one of those two or just continue with the fact that they had three or four different names, but a lot of people don't like the fact that they just went with Fredonia. No one's happy with the fact that the name was Fredonia. Or or they mostly just don't care, but there's more people that, uh, or not more, but there's more people that don't like the name Fredonia than the fact that there's zero people that like the name Fredonia. There was uh, a few people that they couldn't pinpoint uh, anything that they didn't like. Specifically, they just said that in general, they didn't like the school. It was a handful of people that just don't like Fredonia in general. Right below that is the logo, and I do agree that the logo is fucking retarded. It looks like a parking garage. Quoting someone, this is a quote, they said the logo is literally shit. And this was a graphic design person too. I know like, I haven't met any graphic design people that like the logo. They all think it's awful, and it really is. I haven't met anyone that likes the logo, to be honest. The logo is terrible. I don't know who did it, but they should feel bad. And the con is the fitness center. So while there are more people that like the fitness center than don't like the fitness center, it still remains uh, a con on a lot of people's list for the school. And it's, it's mostly the size of it, and it's a very small fitness center. Uh, more than half of it is nothing but cardio equipment, which is only mostly used, or is in use the most during the middle of the day. So a very small amount of time actually consists of the fitness center being busy for cardio equipment, while the rest of the time, there's only a dozen, maybe two dozen people using cardio equipment for the, I don't even know, 40, 50 machines that are all cardio. Only a small percentage of the gym is there for weightlifting. And like I said earlier, it only takes a small amount of people to be using equipment to make you have to completely change your workout or sit there and wait to use the equipment. They don't have a lot of equipment. It's a very small size. For both uh, the pros and cons coming up, uh, there's just a very few amount of people that were going with each of these things. So it's not like it was earlier where, you know, the majority of people all agreed on this thing. You know, now we're down to just a handful of people or, you know, maybe a couple of people that were going with these things. So we're on pros now and I'll just, I'll go through all these pros and then I'll go through all the cons since they're all about even with the amount of people. So the to finish off the pros, we have a handful of people like the learning environment at the school. Uh, they like the music department, and I will agree with the music department is very good on campus. It's one one of the very good things about this school is the music department. Uh, they like the concert halls. They like the spring weather, all two weeks of it. Uh, they thought the dorms were okay, and uh, they were okay depending on, on which building you're in and uh, where in the buildings you are. I know Chautauqua is iffy. Uh, Grissom, if you're in the upperclassmen suites in Grissom on the first floor, like you know, those are very good. Uh, the rest of Grissom sucks. But uh, the CDO, uh, the career department, uh, a lot of people like the career department. Uh, the Ethernet, 
like I said earlier, the Ethernet works fine. A handful of people like the Ethernet on campus. Um, ResNet, the building, the people of ResNet, they like ResNet. They are, they said they're very helpful. Uh, they worked pretty diligently to fix any problems coming up. Um, I haven't had anything to bring up with ResNet, so I can't say anything on it, but ResNet is a pro. The construction, surprisingly. Someone likes the construction, but they only like the construction because it's adding on more for students. So the fact that they're, the school is building more for the students, they like that. Uh, someone said that the school was on point for little snowfalls. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I think uh, they, with the, you know, if the school gets two or six, two or four inches, the school did a pretty good job of taking away that snow, which you know it did because that usually means that it snowed two or four inches over the course of a day, and the school you know just had a plow go around or something. Uh, a handful of people said the internet was okay. They were in the middle. They didn't think it was good. They didn't think it was bad. They thought it was okay. Uh, a couple of people liked the pool. You know, the pool is very clean. The lifeguards there were very good. Uh, a lot of a, a few people. A few people like the layout and the atmosphere of the school. It was okay. I like it. It wasn't too bad. Uh, a handful of people, more than the, the other pros that were going on, they like the fact that the school is no smoking. Anyone that smokes doesn't follow this rule, but they like the fact that the school is trying to make it no smoking. There's still dozens and dozens and dozens of people that you will see just walking from one end of campus to the other end of campus smoking. So it, it doesn't really stop anyone. Uh, this is an off-campus thing. Uh, a handful of people like the creek. They think that's a, uh, a nice place to go, I guess. I don't really go down there. But, you know, again, that's off-campus. They like the social aspect of the school. Uh, they like Rockefeller, that building. They like the Rockefeller building. Uh, a handful of people like the activist groups on campus. Uh, a handful of people like the clubs, the variety of the clubs. Yeah, the school's good for boarding, skateboarding, longboarding. You know, the sidewalks on campus are pretty decent for that. There's, you know, enough room to, to board around campus, which is cool. Uh, people like the fact that other people bring dogs on campus. I'm okay with that. Uh, workers on campus like the fact that they get a yearly raise. The counseling center, specifically someone called out Maggie from the counseling center. That was a pro. So Maggie, good job. Lab access was a pro, but it's uh, you usually only have lab access if you're taking a class that uses that lab. So the lab, the fact that you can go into these labs for these classes after hours to work on projects was a good thing. The resources of the library was a good thing. Um, <laughs> you know who you are for this one, but one of the pros, one person said this, good looking girls on campus. That was a pro. You know who you are. <laughs> The uh, price of tuition, the cheaper tuition, uh, Fredonia is cheaper with tuition, but um, I won't get into it. Cheap tuition, pro. Uh, a handful of people actually had quite a few great professors. I had some good, or some great professors. You know, there's only one or two, but you know, Fredonia does have a few hidden gems in their departments. The cleanliness of the campus. Campus is actually very clean most of the time. Um, Tom Bax. I'm not sure, or Todd Dax. I don't know who Todd Dax is, but whoever you are, someone thinks you're a pro for the entire Fredonia campus. The community is pretty safe. That was a good one. Uh, I had one person who really likes the breadsticks that come out, and when the breadsticks are made correctly, they're the best thing on campus. Unfortunately, 80% of the time, they're usually burnt. And uh, the custodial staff. The custodial staff does a very good job on campus. They, they have to clean up half freshmen and stuff, and usually everything, uh, everything inside is pretty clean, though. They do a very good job. So that's it for the rest of the pros, and I'm going to go down through the rest of the cons, which uh, is a little bit more than those pros. So just to finish it off and go a bit quicker, I'll just read through, and if I have any comments, I'll go with those. But uh, to start off these cons, we got the design of the campus, which uh, the campus was designed for Arizona to make... Uh, to have uh, wind come through and you know push the heat out and give give a breeze on campus. Unfortunately, in Fredonia, which is already very windy, having a campus designed to increase more wind, Fredonia is really fucking windy all the time. It's great, and uh, the the riot stairs. There's no purpose to have those riot stairs anymore. They're just they're very inconvenient. It, we don't have riots anymore. You don't need them. 
The ring road speed limit was a big con. It shouldn't be as slow as it is. It's kind of annoying. Uh, a few people didn't like that. The uh, seats, mostly in Fenton. People did not like the seats in most of the classrooms, but Fenton specifically, they hated the chairs and seats in there. The desks are way too small. Um, they aren't comfortable. They're small. The hours of the library. Uh, I, a handful of people don't like the hours of the library. They think it closes too early. Res life sucks. And that was from an RA. So an RA specifically said that res life sucks tells you something. Another con underneath that are the RAs. Uh, too many RAs don't handle situations correctly or they don't han handle situations at all. So there's a few people that complain about the RAs on top of that. Uh, one person, or I can't remember how many people were, but uh, you know, a few people don't like the fact that they're still getting a ton of emails after they graduate, which I'm still getting emails from academic affairs and I haven't been in school. It's, it's September now. And I graduated in May, and I'm still getting a ton of emails from the school. The townhouses. <laughs> Whoever designed and built the townhouses is retarded. Like, straight retarded. Like, the siding is coming off. The design of them was terrible. Uh, apparently, they had finished the townhouses for a while, and I remember, like, looking at them and wondering when they are going to finish building them because it looked like they weren't finished, but it turns out they had been finished for months. Uh, the siding's falling off. I know the, the piping used for water and stuff uh, it was wrong. Apparently they didn't use the correct piping because in the winter they would, the pipes would freeze and explode. And uh, something, went, something was going on with the roof and the ceiling where water would come in through the roof, freeze in the winter, expand and like, you know, break off parts of that. And, you know, water would then come down into people's apartments in there. So the townhouses are terrible. And whoever built them should feel really bad about themselves. The learning curve of the campus, a few people complained that the, the campus learning curve wasn't good. Um, graduating from Fredonia, you pretty much have no job market presence. There aren't, there aren't too many people that graduate from Fredonia and go off and uh, create a big job market out there. The internships, a handful of people hate the internships. Well, don't hate, but they think it's a con. So internships are a con. Uh, there's a handful of people that are just not proud of the fact that they went to Fredonia. Uh, the lack of Fred Fest this year, a few people didn't like that. Greek life, the lack of it, the lack of Greek life was con, and then Greek life in general. So a few people don't like the fact that uh, there isn't enough Greek life, and then a few people don't like the fact that there's Greek life at all. Campus groups, or the lack of. They don't think there's enough groups on campus, and many of the groups that are on campus are just under the radar. They have their activities night, and then that's all you ever hear from most of them. They're just gone after that. The construction. Construction is terrible. I don't know why they're set up the way they are, but they're taking off. Like, they're completely closing down roads and everything. Uh, it's just, it's very in the way. So uh, a handful of people don't like the construction. FSU for you. A handful of people don't like that. Because no one uses it. It's, very, it's pointless. And then uh, there's no actual fun events from the school. So the school itself isn't really giving students any fun events. And I, I will agree with that. It seems like a lot of the events they have are, are so broad to try and include as many people as possible. Or to, you know, to make sure not to offend anyone that they're not actually fun. The Dunkirk Incubator. Not the Dunkirk Incubator itself, but the fact that it's not properly used and it's not uh, marketed to the students properly. So if the school could include that more with their students, um, it, would, it would probably be a pro. The underage alcohol consumption on campus, a lot of people didn't like that. Uh, the dorms, uh, more, uh, about an equal amount of people who thought the dorms were okay, also thought that the dorms were bad. And it's usually the conditions of the dorms. Uh, the roads on campus are a complaint. Uh, the lack of salt on the ice, but that was already mentioned. Uh, <laughs> a couple people uh, mentioned the fact that the lifeguard coordinator is absolutely terrible. They, they uh, apparently just really don't like the lifeguard coordinator. The education aspect uh, is a con. The attendance policy for classes. Uh, a lot of classes you can pass, you can get A's in and you don't have to show up. Like, what's the point in going if you can get an A without going? Uh, I've had a few classes like that where I did get A's in, and I never showed up. 
The people who work campus services, that is a con. The fact that there's no cafe in Rockefeller. Thompson is a confusing building. Uh, communal bathrooms are cons. There's not enough club teams. Uh, the heat in Fenton. Fenton in the spring and the fall, basically if it's not, even in the winter actually, Fenton is very hot. And the only AC in there is for the small uh, professor rooms. Actual classrooms have no AC and usually just open a window and hot air just comes in. So the heat in Fenton is <laughs> sucks. The counseling center, that, that is a con. Uh, they, a lot of people have trouble getting into the counseling center for emergency situations. The building's locked too early. Uh, the price of books, uh, a lot of professors write their own books and then they charge more than $200 for them, even if you don't really use them that much. So you gotta pay. So even though, like, uh, I've actually seen this before, there's a, uh, two books. There's a general book and then a version of that book written by a professor, and the general book was under $100, and the version by the professor was over 200 and I honestly don't think there was any differences in the two books. The stairs are too small, and this is a big one, mostly for Thompson. Uh, you have hundreds of students in Thompson, and they're, it's three full, three full fours. And there are quite a few staircases in there, but there's, there's not enough room you can't really, like, if you have to carry something up and down the stairs and classes are coming in or getting out, it's very uncomfortable. There's too many people put in these small spaces. It just, it doesn't work. There's not enough computers. That is very, very true. The library, uh, unless you're coming in very early or very late on a random day, like a day that's not a class day or a weekday, you're not going to find a computer um, in the library at all. And a lot of the computers, actually most computers on campus, uh, I timed this once actually. I sat down and I typed in my information and I went to log in and it took 13 minutes to log in. I sat at a computer for 13 minutes waiting for it to log in just to go print something. But there aren't enough computers on campus and a lot of the computers are, are pretty old. They're either old or they're newer but they're cheap. So they're cheap computers that aren't very good. The art gallery, uh, actually it's the design of the art gallery that's con poor upkeep of the art that the school has, not enough support for events on campus, and uh, the cost of classes slash fees. I know there's a lot of classes that have fees associated with them. So it's mostly art classes and I think graphic design classes, but generally you have to, not only are you buying your own equipment for this stuff and your own utensils and everything, but you also have to pay a fee on top of that. So for some of these classes, you're spending hundreds of dollars, and it's usually art classes, you have to spend hundreds of dollars per semester for these classes by yourself on top of the fee that the school makes you pay with it. Uh, the administration school spending. The the uh, school spending in general is pretty bad. You know, townhouses are a very good example of that. The school spends money on very stupid things. Football team is another con. Um, with that, the last two are low student employee wages, uh, lifeguards, at Fredonia are the lowest paid lifeguards in the SUNY system, which is great. And uh, just, general, just general work there for students is you know, very low pay, usually minimum wage. And uh, registration, the registration system, I'm not sure how they can fix it, but registration like sucks. Chances are, even as a senior, you could end up not getting classes that you need to graduate. So that's it for the pros and cons. So I, had, I asked people to uh, rate the school on a scale of zero to 10 and uh, taking the average of that, uh, the average of uh, Fredonia is a uh, solid 6.8 out of 10. Now, there were a couple of people that just gave it solid 10s. Uh, their, their pros and cons weren't very uh, specific. They just kind of you know, gave the school straight 10s. So taking out those ones, uh, disregarding the 10s, the school came out to a 6.4 out of 10. Uh, my rating of the school, uh, I'd give it a 5 out of 10. I think it's it's average in most aspects. Too many departments aren't good enough, but the education and music departments uh, definitely bring it up. Would I recommend Fredonia anyone? If you're going for music, if you're going for education, go to Fredonia. It's cheap enough and uh, it's good enough for that. Uh, other majors, there's better schools. There's far better schools for most other majors on campus, uh, especially if you don't want to deal with the winter here. So to sum it up, there are almost twice as many 
they're not twice as many, but there are far more cons and pros. Uh, the cons in general were more agreed upon than the pros. Um, Bernonia is an average school, altogether an average school, but for a lot of things it's not very good. They can do better, they won't, uh, they're more of a business than a school now, but um, yeah, if you're thinking of coming back to Fredonia or thinking about going to Fredonia for the first time, uh, definitely look around, see if you can find anything better. You probably will. Uh, if you know what you want to major in, uh, find a school that has a better program for it, because uh, chances are Fredonia's program for it is either average or, or below average. So. That's the uh, community in my review of Fredonia for the middle of the 2015 year. Hopefully they get better. Hopefully.